cool. Well, it's ten. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get started because I have sort of condensed this down quite a bit, so I have a lot of material to to get through. I'm just gonna start sharing my screen, and then I'm gonna press my tile windows to bring my notes to the front, and you're gonna see that I have a Horizon Zero Dawn background. Um, so that's what that is. Um, screen two. So you can now see my slide. Now you can see I like video games, and now you can see my slide again. We are good. I'm gonna move that so I can see the chat. <clears throat> Cool. So hello, everyone. Um, it's really nice to see you all popping up in the chat. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, David, great game. Um, PS4, new one coming out soon. Um, <clears throat> so great to see everyone here from all over the world. Um, I want, want to welcome you to my research presentation today. Um, this is about custom perceptions of the community experience. So in the next 30 minutes, I'm going to walk you through the findings of a study that we did at Vanilla Higher Logic, whereby we surveyed customers from around the world to find out what they thought about community and what was important to them in a customer experience, and most importantly, how they felt community met those objectives. Okay. Um, my name is, click next. Um, my name is Mike. I'm the corporate marketing manager over at Higher Logic. I was part of the Vanilla Forums marketing team. I'm super thrilled when we got acquired earlier this year to be part of this market leading community team. It's great. We do lots of fun work. Um, I have a master's in English language. I have an MBA from the University of Leicester, and I'm super excited to be presenting to you guys today. Um, <clears throat> so I've broken today out into six sections. Um, the first three, four sort of set out the stall and give you the context around the research that we've done. And the majority of the new findings are in section four, five, and six. Um, <clears throat> As we go through, I'm gonna invite questions, but I might have to defer some um, and come back to them at the end because I do have a lot of stuff to get through. Um, but stick things in the chat. If I see them, I will um, I will answer them the best I can. Last time I did this, Adrian was with me. He's not, I'm flying solo, so hopefully I can answer the questions myself. Um, <clears throat> so the findings today are taken from an ebook. Okay, this ebook is available in Vanilla Forums um, content library pages.vanillaforums.com slash learn. All of the findings and a lot more about this research is um, unpacked in there. So if you like what you see here and you want to start referring to it or deploying it in your work, you can visit our content library and um, access it there. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so why we did this research? Um, we did this research specifically to find out what customers thought of community and what they liked in the customer experience. Um, I feel like more and more of the stuff that I consume in my work um, is focused around business outcomes, okay? Where, where people are speaking to businesses about what community can be and what community can achieve. And it's all sort of painting a very big picture dream, okay? I'm in marketing, I know that, that's what I do. So we wanted to root this in reality just a bit. So we and many other community professionals, we believe that community is the answer to a lot of people's priorities when they're considering the customer experience. We also believe that community provides a way for businesses to meet their support, success, CS, CX, and marketing goals in an efficient way. But it doesn't matter what we believe, right? And something that we don't see much of is noise from the wider world. I feel we don't often take a look outside of the business sphere and look into lay attitudes about community. So the thing is, it's difficult to do, right? If you present an idyllic picture of an online community full of connection, peer support, helping each other, who wouldn't want that? We wanted to dig a little bit deeper and ask in what ways do people feel it would help? We wanted people to consider the customer experience as a whole before engaging their brain with community to get the real picture. We wanted to find out what was important to people when they were interacting with a brand, what were they looking for in their self-support experience. We did this last year and we wanted to do it bigger. Okay. Then once we'd done that, we sort of incognito wanted to turn people's attention to community. And then, sorry, we wanted to, Ask them some questions incognito away from community and then turn their attention to community specifically, asking them a series of agree or disagree questions that link community to aspects of the customer experience that they discussed previously. So in essence, <clears throat> the first section, cool, what's important to you in a customer experience? We don't mention community. Second, we ask, cool, does community help you with this? Does community help you with this? And we see if people agree or disagree with those statements. Then. <clears throat> We also asked a few questions about business outcomes as well because we were paying survey respondents and we thought it would be good to lump those in as well. So the previous research that we've done. Last year, um, we were sat in Vanilla Forum's office in Montreal and we came across this stat from the TSAA and we wanted to do a deep dive into customer self-support and the customer experience because of this, right? 90% of people use Google as their primary support channel. This ebook report was conducted in March of 2020 and republished in August 2020, um, giving us one of the most recent pre-pandemic studies into the customer experience. So as the world changes again and we come out of lockdown, 
recency of data might not necessarily be the most helpful thing for you. So if you're wondering what customer experience looks like in a non-pandemic world, um, you can take a look at this. This is also available in the, the library that I talked about before, pages.vanillaforums.com slash learn. This research raised some interesting ideas that we wanted to build on this year. But to kick things off today, I'm going to recap some of those ideas for you right now. Um, <clears throat> So what you're looking at here is the data from some agree, disagree questions. And the percentage of value in the middle is how many people agree. We found overwhelmingly that people wanted to solve their own issues before contacting customer support. And that 79% of people expected companies to offer self-service support as part of the customer experience. So 84% of people are trying to solve their own problems. 79% of people expect that companies will help them do that. So we know that 90% of people use Google as their primary support channel, but the majority of people, if they can't find the answer that they want, they search again. And 77% of people say that offering poor self-service support is worse than not offering any at all since you're wasting their time. So essentially, you have 90% of people using Google, most of them looking for self-support. And if you don't meet them there, then they're waste you're wasting more of their time. By the time they actually, um, sorry, you're wasting their time. And by the time they finally reach your poor rep who's there waiting to answer their question, they're already frustrated because you failed to meet their self service um, expectations. So, not investing in customer service is making life harder for your customer, for your business, and also for your reps. Um, <clears throat> we also found out that's loaded now, cool. We've also found out that people value speed the most in their customer service experience. Speed outperforms all other factors and outperforms loyalty and brand recognition, et cetera, by 50%. What's more, of the top five factors that we say contribute to a customer, a positive customer experience, four of them are to do with getting access to information quickly and conveniently. Despite this, when we see that when we ask what channels people are using, it's still traditional one-to-one -one support channels, often requiring a weight that are used the most. Community and knowledge base were much lower, 41% for community, and 30% for knowledge base. <clears throat> so we ended with the conclusion that this demand for self-service support is being undermet, right? We provided a definition of knowledge base and community at this point to make sure that people knew exactly what we were asking. And once we described this, we asked people if that's something that they would like to use. So would you like to use community or knowledge base to solve your answers? In blue, we have the percentage of people who answered yes. I think we have the data from that previous question as to how many people actually used those platforms. We found that 92% of people say that they would use an online community, but only 30. So, talk a little bit about this later. Friends that are trying to invest in this this time around, um, the conclusion. So, customers expect self-support. They expect good self-support, fast and convenient, and both. Uh, but moving on to this year, the first part of the study that we conducted this year was a reprise of the research we did last year. But if people's priorities around their expectations for customer experience have changed in the last year, and if so, how? We also wanted to widen the net and add a little bit more statistical significance to our study by surveying more people. Last year, we surveyed 200 people. This year, we surveyed 600. So we tripled the size of the study. We asked between 17 and 19 questions dependent on their answers. Um, so like a couple of questions, if they answered yes, we answered a follow-up question. Um, and there's a further two questions to qualify them by age and by gender. We used the census balancing method in the USA, um, <clears throat> but that wasn't available to us for the UK and Australia samples. That data skewed younger and more female in those markets. The size of this effect was not enough to skew the overall data set. We're still good there. However, my intention was to look at the separate markets, um, but the data that the, the, the um, what's the word demographic skew between them made that quite difficult. Um, but we'll break that out and work on it in the in the future. So the questions that we wanted to ask the first set of questions, as I mentioned at the beginning, um, we wanted to see if there's been any changes in people's CX usage priorities and preferences over the last year. We also wanted to test the validity of our previous surveys results by addressing the two method methodological questions. The first one, um, I wanted to make sure that we didn't lead with questions about community, right? That the, the people answered their questions about customer experience without engaging their brain with community. The second was to get a larger sample. So the first set of questions we ask about customer experience, usage, priorities, preferences, 
Then we move on to asking people what they thought about community. And we didn't just want to say like, oh, how do you feel about community? Is it good? Is it bad? We wanted to see if they felt that community helped meet the exact CX goals that they'd elicited in the previous questions. So we formulated a bunch of agree, disagree statements that we felt elicited people's opinions of whether or not community helped meet their goals, right? So for example, community helps me find answers to my problems quickly. Do you agree or disagree with that statement? <clears throat> um, cool. So here we wanted to take a deeper look at people's attitudes towards customer experience, right? That's part of the whole point. We wanted to see what people valued in a customer experience and thus what improvements you should be looking to make when investing in customer experience. We also gathered some stats around the business benefits of an improved customer experience, which we will return to in section six. <clears throat> so in our study, we asked people what they value the most when it comes to customer experience. And the results were as follows. Again, we find that the most important factor is speed, followed by having access to someone when you need it. We see trailing are things like being recognized and rewarded for loyalty. People don't necessarily care about that with people having the company know your history with them, um, also not being rated very highly. Languishing in last place, we have having a space to talk and connect with other customers. This is interesting. Um, initially, this seems like bad news for community, right? Um, I'll let you wait till the end of the presentation to decide your own answer for that. Um, this made me think a lot about the, the um, what did you call it? the debate between David Spinks and Richard Millington, like of what community is. My data says that people just want to come in, get an answer to a question, and then get back out again. Um, but <clears throat> this is the raw data. If we sort this and sort of color code it a bit and, and present it better, it has a, um, you can see a theme appear. In my opinion, what people value for a customer experience is that convenience matters more than everything else, okay? The top four when you rank it, fast response time to issues, having a person to speak to when you need it, assistance wherever and whenever you need it, and being able to find the information that you need without having to call someone ranks the most highest. So a note here that number two and four may seem a little contradictory, I think. The number two, having a person to speak to when you need it, being able to find the information. Um, I, I interpret that, that most people don't want to call people, but if they do, there better be someone available, right? The speed piece is quite interesting too. You may remember that email was one of the most popular support channels that we used. Um, that's not a channel that seems especially geared towards instant resolution, right? What it is, however, is a channel where people can just fire off their issue and get back to whatever they're doing. It's not that the problem needs fixing now, it's just people want to get that ball rolling and get back to what they're doing. They don't want to wait on hold. This ties in with other findings that we have from various other pieces of research. Um, PricewaterhouseCooper actually puts efficiency and convenience at the top of factors important to customer experience and factors that people are worth find worth paying a premium for. And HubSpot says that 90% of people expect an immediate response to their customer support issues. These responses are actually referenced in the ebook and we talk about them a little bit more. Then <clears throat> if you look at the top four, Cool, speed, convenience, important. If you look at the bottom four, this is what I would call like the, the warm and fuzzy benefits of customer experience, right? People simply don't care as much about appreciation, recognition, knowing the history, connecting with other customers. You know, these things are not important to people, so they say. Um, <clears throat> so in terms of business objectives, as I mentioned at the start of the presentation, companies actually invest in CX for a variety of reasons. And whilst most of them are about delivering on customer expectations, that's not always the case. The, back, the, the background here sort of falls outside of the scope of our study, but I wanted to include it. Um, I've leaned on the work of Forbes and brought together a bunch of relevant statistics for you. So these stats show that there are broader business benefits to, to delivering in this area beyond just happy customers. Happy customers are not just happy customers, right? They become loyal, they buy again, they spend more. They improve the perception of a brand through their experience as a customer. This last one, this last one blows my mind, right? A people, so think of economics, right? People think you, you um, compete on price, on product. No, people are competing on customer experience. Why do you pay? Think about this. Why do you pay for Netflix these days? Is it, because, is it really because you feel bad for downloading things for free? Uh, you don't want the studios to get your, your money? Or is it because you can just sit on the couch, pick up your remote, choose a show, and have it up on your TV in seconds? Customer experience alone is driving that. Customer experience alone is powering the world's leading brands, in my, in my opinion. That previously mentioned PricewaterhouseCooper study as well shows that customers are willing to pay more on identical transactions for a positive customer experience as well. 
Um, <clears throat> the premium ranges from about 10 to 16%, I believe. People will actually pay 14% more for a coffee that is a good experience, but only 10% more for, for an air ticket. Um, I dispute that. I'm six foot four, and I would pay a lot more for a positive air experience. Um, I'm just going to check the chat for a second, um, see if anything is people having connection. It's not great. Um, chats. Um, customer experience is how biz Disney built their brand. 100% agree. Like customer experience powers the world's biggest brands. Um, <clears throat> cool. So moving on, we have some trends from this year's research to share with you. Okay. When you ask people what support channels form part of their customer experience, you can see that community figure features relatively little, little. Sorry, People want to fire off an email, quickly search on Google, or otherwise use a channel that will notify them when the answer is ready. But it's only after email, Google, and social media that we start seeing the actual real-time channels like online chat and phone support. Um, <clears throat> build it and they will come seems to be untrue here. The message here seems to be go where they are. People want to be on Google. They want you to um, appear in ways that will show up in a regular workflow of emails and social. People value the channels where they can set off an answer and be notified later. Speed of response actually doesn't appear to be speed of response. It appears to be, as I said, speed at which I can get back on with my day. Let's look at the reported numbers for community here. Online community is 35% and knowledge base is at 23%. That's bad news for a company like Hyalogic, right? We set this up a little differently than last year, though. The data that you're seeing, this is the first question that I asked. I have not told them what a community is. I have not told them what a knowledge base is. I've been like, hey, have you used this? People kind of um, use these things without realizing, I think. People are um, using Google, ending up on a community, finding the answer, and attributing the success to Google rather than the community. Um, <clears throat> so after. Um, so to prove that point, I forgot to put the slide in here. To prove that point, um, we asked again, having provided a definition. We gave this definition, an online community, also known as a forum, refers to a portion of an organization's website where members, customers, and fans alike can congregate, ask questions, receive peer-to-peer -peer support, discuss interests surrounding the brand, and make social connections. And then we asked people, cool, does that, does that sound like something that you've used? The number jumps from 35% to 74%. So what gives? It's the same set of people. I already said that I think people are misattributing that click to, to Google. Um, and maybe people were finding the answers they needed without having to ask as well. Um, I think that's key to understanding this. People maybe consider using a community as asking a question. If they find the answer, again, they're giving it to Google. Yeah, exactly. Um, the you know I, <laughs> We sell community. I'm no stranger to talking about the SEO benefits of community. Um, but it's important to dig a little bit deeper and kind of get to the attribution points here. Um, <clears throat> since then, we, um, oh, this is a really complicated statistic. Um, so <clears throat> when we, we asked the people who have not used a community, which was 26%, would you like to? And of the 26% who had not used a community, 44% said they would not like to. The equivalent of that in the whole data set is that 10% of people do not want to use community, which means that 90% of people do. So if you take together all of, all of the people who have used it and all of the people who want to use it, you're looking at 90% of customers want to be using a community to, to solve their self-support questions. <clears throat> Same with knowledge base, okay? Knowledge base refers to a customer service library, which is hosted on an organization's website. A lot of people's, people's self-support starts as a community, transitions to a knowledge base. Um, <clears throat> Part of a self-help function full of resources and tools for customer self-service support. With a strategic approach, you can move to this. 63% of people um, have used this. <clears throat> and of, the, of those who haven't, 36% of don't, them don't want to, which means 87% of people, sorry for the convoluted statistics here, 87% of people want to use a knowledge base. Um, I see a question. Do I have data on why the 10% do not want to use community? No, I collected anonymous survey results, um, and I did not have the opportunity to answer follow ask follow-up questions. Um, and I kept the open-ended questions to a minimum to reduce the cost of the survey. I apologize. Um, <clears throat> there are stats. All the stats that um, back this up are available in the research book that goes along with this presentation. OK, I'll circle back around to that at the end. Um, <clears throat> So there you go. There's just a summary of it. 74% of people have used community. 63% of people have used knowledge base. People who don't want to use only 10% and 13% for knowledge base. Okay, rock and roll. Okay, 
this was the crux of the of the research. I've taken 20, point, 20 minutes to get to this point. This should be some quick fire statistics that will really help you sell the value of community inside your organization. Okay, so important that I'm going to take a little bit of drink of water before I continue. Any questions at this point? No, unless someone's typing. So <clears throat> the last question, um, if we take the definition, congregate, ask questions, receive, it all sounds great, right? I said this at the beginning of the presentation. If you sell people on the dream of community and say, does that sound good? People could be like, yeah, of course, place where I get to like go, make social connections, get better at using products, share my experiences. Of course, that sounds wonderful. <clears throat> What I tried to do is isolate, cool, but like, what do you really value in your customer experience? Speed, cool. Um, and ask questions, do you agree or disagree that community serves these needs, okay? <clears throat> so, the statement, an online community that shows up in search engines is a quick way to find solutions to my problems with a product. 78% of people agree that community provides um, a speedy response. You may feel that I led people to the water here a little bit by including that shows up in search engines, but I think it's important. We've talked about the importance of, of, of correctly giving credit where it's due. Um, <clears throat> I believe the data from the other questions validates this assumption. A community in this use case is a big, searchable, organic repository of the shared experiences of your customers. This, this collective of your customers' experience allows people to search the problems that came before them and find solutions quickly. 70% of people agree with this. Um, <clears throat> so. I guess CMX, um, you're probably gonna have a whole bunch of different community managers um, here, but for those of you who are in support, how many tickets that actually make the way to your support team are unique, one-of-a-kind problems? If you have a community set up properly, that's not gonna be the case. The, the, the questions that everyone asks, the same problems that people have with their, um, with their products that get Googled will direct to the community. Thus, tickets that actually get created and go to your support team will be much, um, much more bespoke, need much more expertise, and reduce the workload, reduce the volume of tickets, and improve the, the quality. Okay. Next question. <clears throat> Do you agree or disagree with the statement that an online community provides me with answers from real people when I need them? So the second most popular aspect of customer experience that I refer referenced before is having a real person to speak to when you need it. And 83% of people agree that community provides this. So what's important here is that we've specified a real person. This is in contrast to a chatbot or some other AI solution. People want to use real words, right? I look at our chatbot log that runs on vanillaforums.com, and you can see people just firing off keywords, frustratedly trying to trigger the automation that's going to give them what they want. When someone jumps in um, and answers their question, you can like feel the relief coming off that chat flow. Like, oh, my God, thanks so God. Yeah, I'm having this problem. Um, people want to fire off their problem in real words and get a response to it later. So people want quick answers from real people. I'm sure this doesn't sound like news to, to those of you who work in customer support, but a community gives people um, from outside your support team the chance to jump in and help too. People like to help and will often do so just for the sake of status in the community or some badges provided by the gamification module or whatever. And if the idea of relying on the goodwill of your customers for any support people in here feels a little too risky, wishy-washy, um, <clears throat> look at a company like Acer. They do a great, great job of incentivizing people um, to directly help with their customers. I have my eye on the time. I have to speed up. Um, <clears throat> An online community allows me to get help with customer support issues when and where I need it. 80% of people agree with this. Um, <clears throat> I think that people, this shows that people rightly see that um, at this point that online community is a resource that's there for them, not a channel through which to communicate. Okay. Um, it's good news that they also appear to see it as a permanent place where they can dip into from any browser or device when and where they need it. People aren't used to waiting for answers to their questions anymore. How many times a day do you pick up your phone just to get an instant answer rather than look it up later? Um, this morning, I couldn't wait to find out what like Good Charlotte were up to this year. I was like, Ooh, what's Benji Madden up to in 2021? He's actually married to Cameron Diaz, which I didn't realize. Um, <clears throat> anyway, uh, one of our customers, F-Secure, saw 20% savings from people calling in less as a result of their community. That instant answer is there when they need it. Um, <clears throat> I Google everything too, Brian. It's, it's horrendous. Like, remember when we used to be okay not knowing things? Um, <clears throat> An online community helps me find the information I need without having to speak to a customer service rep. 85% of people agree with this statement. People don't want to talk to someone. It's not quick and it's not convenient. If it's a real person, that's great, um, but it's not ideal. 85% of people agree that a community provides them with a way of avoiding having to have that conversation. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now, as we go down, so we're moving into the, the, um, the territory of looking at attributes that people said they valued less in their customer experience. 
remember people said that actually knowing your customer support history is not an important part of the customer experience, but still um, 70 people, 71% of people believe that community provides a good way of doing that. Um, <clears throat> Next one, I snuck this in as well. Um, this was not necessarily related to customer experience, but I know that one of the great use cases for community is building customer success, right? Especially in tech. Um, so having access to an online community of peers using a product helps me bring build confidence using that product. Um, <clears throat> I feel this way about a lot of the tools that I use in my job. The HubSpot community is absolutely excellent for helping me become a better marketer. Um, I'm joining the Sixth Sense community soon for account-based marketing stuff. Having people to talk to who know what you're going through will help you build, help you get better at your job and help you get better at using your product. Um, <clears throat> okay, in terms of business goal, having your customers feel appreciated. Having access to an online community makes me feel more valued as a customer. 71% of people agree. <clears throat> I appreciate companies that provide a shared space for customers to provide feedback and share experiences. 88.58% of people agree with this statement. Um, <clears throat> next one. Um, overall, customers feel more loyal. An online community around a product helps me feel more loyal to a brand. Only 69% of people agree with this, which is lower than some of the things. Um, I bet you, though, as mentioned with regards to customer success earlier, people will definitely become more sticky as a result of this. They get better at using things. They will get more value out of your product. So they might not feel like they're more loyal to your brand, but they will be better with your product and get more value from it. So you can think that that is going to be um, definitely a factor in their loyalty. Um, an online community makes me feel more confident trusting a brand with my business. 80% agree. I think this resonates with all of us, right? If you're shopping around for a, um, a product or a, um, a software, a piece of software, if you go and you can see an active community of people using it and talking about it and asking questions and having them answered by peers and also by support agents, you're going to know that you can jump into that transaction feeling supported by not just one, two people, but a whole community of people who understand what you're doing. Um, <clears throat> I would rather use a dedicated online forum than interact with a brand on Facebook. That's 68%. Um, so more, more people than not agree with this statement. Um, however, it is lower than the rest. Um, I think despite this, I think there's a, um, a whole bunch of reasons this is preferable for brands. Um, SEO is the big one. The propriety nature of the data that you put in your community means that you can, um, you can own it, you can access it, you can manipulate it, you can store it. Um, Facebook is notoriously bad for that, as I'm sure many people in CMX know. Um, you have more moderation avenues available to you. Um, social media content has a higher turnover. Um, I'd also um, make the point that by having an online community, you isolate um, your brand's community from a lot of the sort of controversial stuff that happens on Facebook. I know people um, join and leave Facebook quite regularly and get upset with stuff they see. Your brand is away from that. It's in a nice space that you control and you have access to. Um, <clears throat> I have two minutes left. That is the last, um, the last statement. Um, all of this data and insight is contained in the research report I'll show you in just a second. But if you want more information about any of these things, all of these resources are available to you at the Vanilla Forums content, forums.com slash learn. Please head over there. Tons of webinars, tons of content. Um, there is a longer version of this presentation that I gave in April. Um, Adrian was uh, along with me on that, helping out and provide some great insight. So you can go and access the recording of that there. Um, and if you just want to head straight for the stats, I'm seeing lots of people talking about the, the report. Um, look for this. It's called Customer Perceptions of the Community Experience, and it's available in the content library. Um, I'm just going to do a quick scroll. Hiya, thank you very much. That's, uh, that's very helpful to have the link. Robin, that is the nicest thing I've heard all day. Um, <clears throat> are there any questions in the survey that asked about the level of trust they felt within the community and how that values? Um, no, that's a great question. Um, how they value customer feedback versus um, support rep feedback, that would be an excellent way of expanding this survey. Um, thanks, thanks, thanks. Thank you, guys. Um, this was this was all wonderful. I've had a great time. I realized I spoke really fast. Um, I apologize. Um, and feel free to connect on LinkedIn if you would like anything. Um, Mike Ellis, Hiologic. Thank you very much.